how often can you say that you truly drop into your body and ask her what she needs? Usually we get completely carried away by where we have to go next, what's next on our task list, and so on and so forth. And we don't often pause and take the moments that we need in order to check in with ourselves. Join me this week as I take a journey with Katie Amarose of Spirit Remembered as we talk about how being embodied is a spiritual act and how important it is for our reproductive health. Hi, I'm Adrian Irizarry. I'm an Eastern medicine practitioner who is passionate about women's health and helping women live their best lives. My goal is to put you in the driver's seat of your health, offering period solutions for a symptom-free life. Statements made in this program are for educational purposes only and not intended as a substitution for medical consultation or advice. We do not claim to diagnose, treat, or cure any diseases. This podcast is inclusive and welcomes all gender identities. The focus of the program is on biological function and we will use the term women throughout, but it is referencing physiological and social challenges for biology, not identity. Come as you are, I am happy you're here and welcome all performances of identity. I hope you find something helpful in this show. Welcome back to another episode of the Reproductive Rebel Podcast. I truly believe in this idea of mind, body, and spirit being absolutely fundamental in terms of people's overall health and wellness. And I am so excited to have Katie Amarose on the show today. Katie Amarose is a professional priestess, space holder, transformational guide, and steward of the divine feminine mysteries. She supports women in their remembrance of who they truly are, coming home to their hearts and co-creating their lives from this space. She facilitates this embodied remembrance and transformation through one-on-one alchemical journeys, full-body anointing, ceremony, workshops, retreats, and the Temple of Remembrance Mystery School. So as you can tell from that description, Katie really brings us home to our bodies in some really beautiful ways. And I am so excited that she has joined me for this conversation today. Welcome, Katie. Thank you. I am so excited to be here with you today. So Katie and I have worked and moved in very similar circles for a few years now, and We both have been on some pretty transformational journeys during that time frame and have co-created some really beautiful things. We have some sound and anointing journeys that are coming up together. If you are local to a seacoast area of Maine and New Hampshire, keep watching for those because those are going to be amazing. But there's this really big piece of being able to get into your body that is a really fundamental part of health. And this is why I wanted Katie to join me on the show today, because she speaks so eloquently about this aspect of femininity. So Katie, tell us a little bit about how you came to this work. Yeah, I have a pretty typical story of how I really dove into energy work and my spiritual journey. I was physically ill. It began in high school. And I had all sorts of intestinal issues, and it led to really severe anxiety. I did not want to leave the house. I was really questioning what my future was going to look like, if I'd be able to, you know, leave my parents' house to go to college and just what my life would look like. And through that process, I was really struggling with Western medicine. I there was no answers. The solution just kept being around medication, anti-anxiety, anti-depression medication. And they didn't seem to want to hear that those symptoms came after the physical symptoms. I began to see a acupuncturist who did traditional Chinese medicine and herbs. And we changed my diet. We did the acupuncture work. He put me on some herbs. And within 10 days, I could function again. I wasn't cured. I wasn't healed. But something had shifted enough. I could, you know, go back to school. And then through that, I dove into my family, began seeing a shamanic-based energy practitioner. 
And through all of this, I was learning these very distinct, different bodies that we occupy. My physical body needed that diet change, needed those herbs and supplements. My energy body really needed that energetic support from the acupuncture as well as the shamanic energy work. And then I was uncovering that there was this whole pool of emotional stew, if you will, living in my gut that and just to see. And then there was even beyond that, as those areas began to heal and years of a journey, there was that piece, too, of the mindset. I had been sick for so long, I identified as a person who had stomach issues, I identified as, you know, a sick person. And as the physical symptoms went away, as I worked with those emotional symptoms, as all those pieces, that last part I really had to work with was, I'm not a sick person, you know, I, I don't have stomach issues anymore. Like I need to let go of that version of me that was for so long and really meet and introduce and get to know who I am now. And through all of that, every step I took, it was so not a conscious choice. It's like spirit just pulled me along. It was like, this is the work you're meant to do. And, you know, at that time, you know, I was in school. I had these other plans for what my future was going to look like. And any time I sort of veered off that track, where I was like, yeah, this is cool. I'll do this for now. And then I'm going to do this thing. Spirit would somehow just bring me right back. I was like, this is your path. <laughs> this is what you're meant to do. And it all sparked to the pieces I was already holding that were already coming natural to me, but I had no idea about. Like I was insanely empathic and picking up energy everywhere I went, but I had no words for that until I began to learn what this energetic realm really was mm -hmm. and how to operate with that. And yeah, and then through that, it has just been this ever spiraling journey and we've gone deeper and the way I show up in this, the way I offer this, my practice has evolved so much, but I just keep coming back to that piece of, the importance of every aspect of us that makes us up in our beautiful forms. And none of them can be left behind. None of them can be looked over because they all bring forth what it is that's presenting in our physical body, our physical reality, and how we're moving through this world. Oh, that was so beautifully worded. And listening to you tell your story, there's so much of that <laughs> that resonates with me. I mean, I had gastrointestinal stuff that kind of took over my life. And the further afield I went from the work that I was supposed to do, the sicker I got. Oh, yeah. You know, even just how I communicated myself to the world, like during the time when my gastrointestinal and migraine issues were the worst is when I was trying to walk, talk and sleep <laughs> like a patriarchal system, right? I thought, mm -hmm. I believed, I knew. I didn't feel. I had been told by a female executive in my very first job that if I was going to succeed as a woman in the working world, I had to think, believe, and know. I could never feel. I was like 21 when someone said that to me, and I took that so deeply to heart and made it such a part of the fabric of my body and how I moved through the world that I moved away from, you know, loving to take pictures of flowers and walking outside. And I felt like I needed to, yeah, I mean, my entire closet when I worked in corporate America, because I, you know, did that in a past life, was like all black and navy blue and brown and gray. There was no color in there. My heart wanted color. Mm. But that put me outside of the system and outside of that box that I was supposed to fit myself into if I was going to be successful. And the peak of my health issues, like you were explaining, the peak of my health issues is when I was denying and not engaged with that spiritual side of myself, that emotional body side of myself. and. Once I started peeling back the layers of that, and that took years, mm -hmm. I started going, oh, like there's actually like this very deeply feeling. And I too am also very empathic and felt like the whole world was coming at me all the time and had no skills for being able to create a barrier energetically between 
what everyone else was feeling and what I was feeling. I've now been able to create that level of separation, but you know, it's taken me decades to get here. <laughs> As a younger person, like I just was sensitive to how everybody felt about everything. And it made me really physically very sick. Mm. Yes. Yes. We're this antenna, right? We're bringing all this in. And then where's it go? Okay, we'll just store that right in that gut area, right? (laughs) Yeah. And we just fill up. We fill up. And so much of it isn't even ours. It's all this that we brought in that there's no space. Our capacity is so small. And we're like this raw nerve at that point. Then the anxiety comes in. Then the stress comes in. Then the overwhelm comes in. All these pieces. Because we have no space to process any of this that's coming at us. And I love that you brought up that piece too around the patriarchy, right? This like very masculine way of moving through the world that we are are taught. And that is, I think, a huge piece of what really brought on my illness was trying to fit into that box that did not fit with the female hormone cycle, right? That did not fit with feminine energy, that piece of trying to operate in that way and show up in that way and shrink myself down. And I try, oh, did I try to just live my life on the side and to live the societal life otherwise, right? To fit in, to have that regular nine to five job or to have that whatever it was. And then in the little bit of time I had to myself, try to be who I was. And it just was not, Spirit was like, excuse me. (laughs) And every time I tried, I would get physically ill. And it came to, and then the last decade has been this balancing and this unraveling and the shedding of, okay, this is conditioned. This isn't really you. This isn't really where you fit. This isn't what you truly believe. This needs to unravel. Oh, this is hooked into this. This is that. And to really be able to show up in my divine feminine nature, in my actual energy cycles and to work in that space. And that's one reason I love your work so much is to be able to mirror that with my physical menstrual cycle to live in that way and have this structure coming from a society that didn't teach me how to live as a woman. Yeah. To go, oh, my body has this wisdom for me. I have my structure built in. I just have to actually flow with it. What? <laughs> Thank you for saying that because I also had these same issues and this is why I feel so passionately and why this show exists to let people know that like when you feel like you're trying to push a boulder up a mountain, mm. like you physically and energetically are trying to push a boulder up a mountain. Like you feel that way for a reason because our body, just like the seasons in nature, gives us exactly what we need when we need it. Our modern world and the demands of the modern world exceed what our capabilities are and our limits are quite a lot of the time. And that's where a lot of disharmony comes from. But like where you were talking about like that denial creates stress and creates, you know, the right conditions for anxiety and all of these things. Yes. Yes. Oh my freaking God. Yes. (laughs) Like I see that every day in my practice. And one of the reasons I love pelvic steaming and why when that modality came to light for me, it was such a powerful shift for me. Because as somebody who had, you know, like you said, tried to live in this conditioned box because I wanted to be successful because, damn it, I can do everything a man can do. (laughs) And I wanted to prove that I could do it with a backflip and a twist because that's just how I'm wired. And that competitive edge kept driving me beyond, right? And I lived in my head and I thought through all of the things that I needed to execute on. And I still, to this day, (laughs) I physically put my hands over my heart to get myself out of, I'm also an Aquarius for anyone who is familiar with astrological signs. I very much live in my head. So that energy plus how I'm wired in terms of when I came into this world, both of those things kind of work against me when it comes to this stuff. So I have to physically put my hands over my heart to check in with my body and go, does this actually feel aligned to me? Or am I doing something that my ego brain is telling me I have to do? Is it too much for where my physical body is showing up today? And pelvic steaming was the very first thing for me that really brought me down out of my head and into my body Mm -hmm. in a very 
embodied and visceral way saying, girlfriend, you need to check in with this body you have here. And you've gone so far afield from where you should be that this is why this isn't working for you. And as those structures started to fall apart, my practice really started to grow in some absolutely beautiful and magical ways. And the most amazing people came through the door because I wasn't trying to force it from an ego space. I was just feeling into, does this feel good in my body or not? And going with it and trusting that my body wisdom knew so much more than this thing that sits on top of my shoulders, right? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and you've been on some of this journey with me. So you know how hard that's been for me to be like, okay, brain, I hear what you're saying. However, body, where are we at today? Yes. I think so often we think we are our mind. And so often we are anchored into this mind and then we're floating above. We are nowhere in our body. And it can be really challenging to actually come into this vessel because we've kind of turned it into that crazy overflowing closet that we may all have in our homes. <laughs> yes. And the idea of coming into it is that same idea of opening up that closet door when everything's built up against that door. And we know as soon as we open that, it's all going to come tumbling out. And we go, nope, I'm just going to, you know, I might even just put a chair against that. I'm not going anywhere near that. And so to drop in, so many people get caught up on, I don't know how to do that, or, you know, I can't do that. And it's having that compassion and that patience with ourselves, knowing, okay, this isn't just an easy, we're not just dropping into this already. We're learning a new skill, I should say. It's a skill that we all inherently have and know how to use, but we have to remember it. Mm. And in doing so, it's not like we just came into this body and it's this pristine empty vessel that we're occupying, we have years of stuff built up in there, right? We have years of emotions we didn't want to feel, that we didn't have the space to. Maybe we've been in survival mode up until now. And so as we begin to drop in, it can be really uncomfortable. We've also built our lives from this headspace. We've built our lives from this conditioned space. And sometimes those lives are extremely out of alignment for ourselves. And we live in this place, right, where there's this magic pill for things or where there's this like quick fix for all of these pieces. And so in our mind, we think that we need to just make it work. We need to just like find the way to fit into our job or to make this work or to shift our mindset in them. When the reality is as we begin to tap back into ourself, back into our body and listen to the wisdom she has, sometimes our life changes drastically. Sometimes we are extremely aware of all the things going on that are out of alignment that we're not the problem in. We don't need to fix ourselves. It's We need to shift our reality. We need to shift the life that we're co-creating for ourselves. And that's no small feat. That takes tremendous courage. So beautifully worded. And there's so many pieces of that I think are important to call out because where you're talking about this reality that you're co-creating and we just don't like drop in with this understanding of like how to get into this space. This is where I think the work that you do is so incredibly important because at some level, women understand that they're intuitive, although it may not be a conscious thing. They just go, oh, well, my gut said this was a bad idea, right? But they might not have vocabulary for that. So I think that's important to like call out and name. Like when you have your little gut bells go off and go, <laughs> I think this is kind of a bad idea. She's really smart and you should listen to her. And it may not make sense in this thing that sits on your shoulders, right? And I'm pointing and tapping to my head when I'm saying all of this. You know, the head may not be able to make logical sense of it, but actually the logic usually follows afterwards. Mm -hmm. The body shows up and goes, heck yes. Hell no, like very quickly off the bat. And you might not know why, but your brain tries to make sense of it. And if your brain can logically make an argument that this isn't logical, <laughs> oftentimes we try to defer to, well, my brain makes a great case for this, <laughs> right? So one of the absolutely beautiful things about Katie's work is the fact that she teaches you she is your guide 
on how to get back to yourself, your truth, your authentic voice, which all lives within all of us. Yet most of us don't know how to get there. And I also want to like just talk about the spiritual side of this too. Like we have this idea in our culture that the spiritual journey is beautiful and and we just like float into perfect alignment. That's all bullshit. Let's put that out there. I have had, and Katie has witnessed this, I have had (laughs) transformational periods in my life where I am like, I need to embrace the suck simply because (laughs) I realized how far outside of alignment I was. And what it took to bring me back in alignment, I really felt like my soul was being baptized in fire, right? So Mm -hmm. this spiritual journey isn't like sunshine and roses and pretty clouds and fairies, right? Although we have this kind of expectation of this journey, but what it does is it's asking you, it's inviting you to really take a look inside of yourself and go, what does the little kid inside of you need? Because that little kid was the most authentic version of you. Before the world ever came in and told you you had to act a certain way or sound a certain way or dress a certain way or be a certain way, and this is what those expectations are, right? You saw the truest version of yourself when you were a child. Things that you were attracted to that made you happy inside, all of those kinds of things. Knowing how to play, Oh my God, Mm. totally forgotten how to play. Oh, yes. Because adulting sucks. (laughs) We we have such an expectation and like this level of perfectionism because, you know, everybody's house looks like Better Homes and Gardens TV Mm. on freaking Instagram. Like that shit isn't real. If you look at those people's houses, those videos were probably filmed with all of their clutter. (laughs) Like, let's be real, right? But we create all of these unhealthy expectations for ourselves and think that we have to hold ourselves to these benchmarks. And because all of that takes thinking, right, we're all in our thinking brains to try to get there, we lose touch with how does this actually feel inside of my body? (sighs) Right? So true. And if we really stopped for just a second, and touched base with putting your hands over your heart. For me, this is how I do this when I'm busy and I can't sit on a steam stool, which also helps bring me into this space. But I put my hands over my heart and I go, how are you feeling? Which sounds like you're having a conversation, right? For me, that's the easiest way to get there. Mm -hmm. So for people who are listening, who are totally new to this concept, How would you recommend they get started being able to initiate this conversation with themselves, Katie? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. I think a really big piece of everything you just touched on is the necessity for presence in order to do this. You know, so often you said that, you know, our body says something to us. You know, we have that gut instinct. We have that this is not for me. This is for me. This yes, this no, whatever it may be. But in order to actually notice that, we have to be here now. We have to be in this now, here and now space. And our mind often keeps us in the future or in the past, right? We're worrying about something that happened or we're stressing about something that we have to have happen in the future. And so my beginning place for anyone, and this is something I still do every day, and you don't even have to close your eyes. I prefer to do it with my eyes closed. I feel like it helps me. But just close your eyes and take three deep breaths. And during that time, right, we're not multitasking. We're not also helping someone else. We're not checking our phone. We're not running through that to-do list. We are fully focused on those three deep breaths. That can take 20 seconds. We all have the possibility to put a 20-second practice like that throughout our day. And so often the other piece of what is keeping us so wound up and so out of the present is that we don't have any natural breaks, any transitions between our lives. We wake up and we hit the ground running until we fall back into bed at night, exhausted, depleted, miserable. Mm -hmm. And so just these three deep breaths 
can be that natural transition. So say, you know, you wake up and you have your breakfast and you've been getting ready, you've been getting dressed, you've been possibly getting the kids ready, you've been whatever you need to do. And, you know, you have your coffee made or you have your breakfast made. You sit down before you eat, close your eyes, take three deep breaths. And you are saying to yourself, okay, I'm ready now. You know, I've gotten dressed. That part's done. We're ending it. And we are restarting something else now. And then you eat your breakfast. Maybe you do it, you know, when you get to work as well. Or when you're leaving work, maybe you do it between phone calls. And each time you are restarting that clock in a way. You're coming back to this here and now moment. And it seems super simple, but that's the starting place. That's what we're working with transition out of the rat race into some sort of a semblance of a place where we can begin to hear ourselves. Because in order to hear, our body is always talking to us. She is a chatty Cathy. She is nonstop. She wants to have a relationship with us. She wants to have this dialogue going. She is picking up so much about ourselves, about the world. She's got a lot of input for us. But in order to be able to develop that relationship, just to hear her in general, we need stillness. We need quiet. We need presence. And so that all begins with those three breaths. And then from that space, you can always go beyond that. From that space, you can bring in, I love what you spoke about, putting your hands on your heart. Yes, yes. And from that space, as you're breathing, you can visualize yourself dropping from your head, anchoring down into your heart. I love that. And it's so important to give ourselves those punctuated breaks too, because from a Chinese medicine perspective, this is where liver chi stagnation starts becoming an issue. And that is a big culprit behind period cramps, right? So if we're able to give ourselves those moments, it does help the health of your cycle. It helps for headaches that arise during different parts of the month because when we're stressed, we're constricted and we don't have proper energy and circulation of fluids in our body, right? So being able to give ourselves these punctuated moments of dropping in like that tells your nervous system, hey, I'm not being chased by a saber-toothed tiger all the time. It's totally fine to take these few breaths and to just relax. One practice that I've gotten into, and anybody who follows me on Instagram, you'll randomly see pictures of flowers. I'm kind of a silly person when it comes to going for a walk with flowers. I climb into flower beds. I'm like, oh, that's a pretty flower, right? But I've started doing that because it keeps me in the present. And it makes me walk slower, right? Because if you're walking with intention, like you have to get somewhere by a certain time and you've got to be back to your office by a certain time, your nervous system doesn't have a chance to like downregulate and go, hey, I'm actually not being chased. Getting out and moving the chi in your body, but doing it at more of a leisurely pace See what kind of cloud animals there are. For me, it's flowers. I love flowers and foliage. And you'll, again, if you watch my stories on Instagram, I am constantly taking pictures of wildlife and nature and all of these things because these are things that I'm seeing when I'm out on my walk and they fill my cup and they fill my soul and they make me happy and they bring me joy. But they've also been my way of forcing myself to slow down and literally and figuratively smell the roses because it helps bring me back into my body. I love the work that I do. I know without a doubt in my mind that I am doing exactly what spirit called me to do in this life. And yet the pace at which I have to do it sometimes causes stress, right? Because the world outside of my practice doors moves significantly faster than I would like it to, (laughs) both from my perspective as well as what I want to see in the future for my children, right? And being able to take these moments to slow things down helps take me not only out of my head back down into my body, but gives me those moments to breathe. I love what you were saying about taking those three breaths and how simple that practice is all during the day. Take a walk on your lunch break. Take time to smell the roses. All of those things that make you smile 
about little things that are happening in the moment. A lot of times, like our current moments are happening through the lens of a camera because we have a phone up in front of us. And yes, it's wonderful. I love the fact that my phone has allowed me to preserve sections of development of my children's lives and all of these things. But the more that I learn how to move through the world in an embodied way, the more I wish I could have that video, but not actually have to watch the live thing through it. Because we miss out on the now. We're always talking about, you know, you're going to take that trip in the future. You're going to do this thing in the future. When things slow down, they don't. Unless you make that time for it. Yeah. And this goes back to what you're speaking of, the spiritual journey. You know, this idea we have of what it is and this intense, whatever the ideas are. The reality is that everything you just spoke of seeing and smelling the flowers, right? Going on that walk, all of these pieces of bringing ourselves into the present moment, that is a spiritual journey. Bringing joy back into our life, reclaiming our lives in general, not just being on this continuous 24-7 track that doesn't ever end and then we're so depleted, right? We need either an intense break on the weekend or we need that vacation or whatever it may be bringing that all into our moment-to-moment existence. Spirit is all around us. Beauty is all around us. And it's finding ways to bring that back in for ourselves. And it's going to look different for every single person. But in doing, that is where we get to know ourselves anew. That is where we get to be in relationship with our hearts And that is where we go back and we meet that authentic us, which you had spoken to, right? That was who we were as small children when we didn't, when we weren't trying to conform, when we were not trying to have to be a certain way, you know, it might be different for everyone, which age that actually started to shift. But we can have that again. We can prioritize fun and play again and laughter. We can come back into our bodies and we can and we need to bring our authentic selves to the world because that is what shifts and changes this world opposed to us trying to fit into something that is outdated and not necessarily where we're meant to be. Well, and all we have to do is look at the news and the epidemic issues in like I'm going to keep the focus on reproductive health because of the scope of this show. But all you have to do is like look at the world around us. Like we have all time high levels of infertility challenges. We have all time high levels of people struggling with anxiety and depression. Like our box isn't working. It's the whole reason my practice exists because women get gaslit in the the Western medical model, more often than not. They don't have their voices heard. And we've had enough of this bullshit storyline for a long enough period of time where we have been made to feel like our voices aren't important, like we're to be seen and not heard, that if we're not perfect, we're not enough. Like, And I know as I'm saying some of this, I'm sure there are probably people listening because I know if I had been listening to this even a couple of years ago, I would have recoiled and gone, oof, that one hit a little close to home, right? But I'm saying all of this and I'm having the tough love, tough mama conversation here because if we don't check in with ourselves and learn how to step into who we're supposed to be, our health suffers the world around us suffers, right? I just think about like moms. I have so many moms that come into my practice and they're like, I'll do the thing that you're asking me to do once. And they list off this big, long checklist of all of these things. And it's like, my love, if you do not pour into your cup and you don't take that time for you, you're not going to be able to show up for your children the way that you want to. You're not going to be able to create the future for them that you want to. I know for me, it is critically important that my girls learn that it is okay to be who they are. 
And there are going to be some people who are going to align with it and some people who are not. And that is okay because the people who are going to embrace who you are, the truest sense of who you are going to be your people. And those are the ones that are worth sticking around, right? Because I have like impressionable teens right now. So this is a really hard conversation, right? And, you know, mom only some days knows things and doesn't other days because of their life stage right now. But I think it's incredibly important to model this kind of behavior. I am the parent who fully dresses up in costume to walk her kids around for Halloween because I don't want to lose that side of being a kid. That's fun for me, right? I have no problems doing the weird, wacky things that are very childlike with my kids. And now that they're teens, like they're not quite as appreciative of it as they were when they were little and they were building cardboard rockets, right? But you know, but it's still like I can show them that as an adult woman, it's okay to still do things that bring you joy and to be a little offbeat because being in alignment with what society wants us to do isn't healthy. And you touched on such an important piece. It comes back to that airplane oxygen mask. Oh, uh, yes. right. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great analogy. <laughs> we have to pour into ourselves before we actually have anything to offer anyone else. And we are taught the exact opposite of that. As women, we are taught, we are conditioned, we are held to this level of pouring into every single thing and person outside of ourselves to our depletion. And there's even this twisted sense of pride that can come with that sometimes of look how much I'm giving look how much I'm sacrificing for everyone else around me and that can only last for so long and we are taught that pouring into ourselves that prioritizing ourselves is selfish right that we're being self-centered in the negative context but the reality is if our cup is empty we have nothing to give if our cup is empty and illness comes in we have nothing to give anyone else. We need to pour into ourselves. And beyond that, we're also taught that this authority is all outside of us, that we need permission, that these other people know more than us or society knows what it is we need to do. But as we begin to pour back into ourselves, as we come back into that, we are gifted with the remembrance that we have so much wisdom within ourselves. And as we begin to tap into that and bring that forward, it is a gift to the world. It is a gift to every relationship in our circle because we are showing up authentically. We're not meant to be this cardboard cutout society. We need each and every person's authentic gifts to come to the world. And that is how our society and our world and our children grow up and we change all of these pieces. It's not this outside thing. But in order to do any of that, we have to take care of ourselves. It's so true. And all of these things are aspects that I wish I could go back and tell my younger self, you know, yeah. and I think this is not the only reason why I wanted you on the show, but I think that we've really had some super important points that are so critical for women's health in general, collectively, because we are seeing all of these fertility related issues because we don't know how to do this. Or we don't take the time to do this. I recently interviewed meal prep chef. Okay. And the focus of our entire discussion on this show. So make sure you go back and check out that episode. Was completely around how women skip breakfast. Because they don't feel like they can put that time into themselves. So then as I'm hearing Katie talk about taking those moments to breathe before you eat. Some people don't even feel like they're worth pausing enough in their productivity to give themselves nourishment, let alone take steps in a spiritual nourishment direction. Like we're not even meeting like basic, your body won't function without food basics because there's such a thrust and emphasis and yes, I understand that was a very masculine sounding statement, but I did that on purpose because that is the energy that keeps us from being able to 
slow down and not feel shame and guilt around taking a deep breath and slowing down. She gave a great example in that show about how she had a day where she things were moving a little bit slower and she decided that she was going to sit on the couch and watch a show, which she never does because she's always in motion, which I very much resonate with. And her fiance came home and she jumped almost like, oh, I feel guilty. I'm doing something I shouldn't be doing. I should be in motion right now. Right? I've had that same response. So many of us have that feeling like if we sit idle for just a couple of minutes, we're doing something wrong. We're breaking the rules somehow in a bad way. So if you don't take anything else from this episode, it's that you deserve to pour into your own cup. And you actually have to prevent illness. And I also love how we've talked about this spiritual aspect of things without any labels, because you do not have to have a label for how you experience your spirituality. And yet it can be a very present part of your life. And so don't feel like being spiritual has to come with a certain label or a certain prescribed way of doing it. Being embodied and in present in your life is a spiritual experience if you only allow yourself to have it. Mm. Mm. Beautifully put. Yes, 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 yes. The other piece I want to add to that is as women, we are communal creatures. We are not meant to do this alone. And so often our lives and the amount we're each carrying put us in this position where we're doing so much alone. And so the idea of even taking these sacred pauses can feel overwhelming. The idea of trying to figure out how to shift our lives how to begin to create space within our being. All of that can feel extremely overwhelming. It can feel like just one more thing we need to add to our super insane to-do list. And in these moments, this is where sisterhood comes into play. This is where having some allowing someone to support you in this shift in this process. Sometimes, yes, we have all of this wisdom within our body, but sometimes we need some support. We need some holding to help us be able to access it, to help us on that journey of remembrance. And that is perfectly okay. That is how we are wired to operate. And I think it's so important to acknowledge that because we are very much in a culture where we're expected to do it on our own. And globalization has been really beautiful in a lot of ways, but it's also been very isolating in a lot of ways because families have moved away from family members, or maybe they've made choices because being near their biological family doesn't feel aligned to them. But in a lot of cases, that movement away from that village idea, right, that communal idea has created additional mental health and physical health burdens on people because the demands far exceed your capacity. And As women, we're communal creatures and we're verbal creatures. Mm. We are verbal. We need to have a place to unpack and process and share who we truly are, what we truly need, even if we feel guilty as hell having it come out of our mouth. The weight will lift off of your body when you Mm. have that space to be held safely to express what you need. And this is one of the completely magical, invaluable, man, there's so many words that I could use to describe the work that Katie does, is we need this so badly and we need it right now more than ever. And the longer that I've been in practice, the more deeply I see this connection. Like if you saw in season two, I did an episode with Dr. Emily Wilson and we talked about emotions being held in the pelvis. I've done several episodes about how important the emotional body is. And this is why I'm so happy 
to be joined by your skill set today because now I think we need to talk about the spiritual side of it because your physical body is a manifestation of energy and motion, which are our emotions, and our ability to have a relationship with the spiritual side of our life. Mm. And we've totally lost this skill. And I love that her practice is called Spirit Remembered. And that her mystery school has remembrance in it because the fabric of her body knows how to do all of this. But because we listen to this thing that sits on our shoulders, this head of ours so much, we forget that we have this ability, this innate capability. We have cellular memory around this, folks. And Katie helps facilitate bringing that into fruition, helping you get back to where that is. And what it feels like to come into right relationship with it. Everything that I do in my practice is about bringing you into right relationship. And there's a trifecta that's involved there. Your Mm. physical, emotional, and spiritual body to bring you into right relationship. You cannot have one without the other. If I have learned anything through my baptism by fire spiritual (laughs) journey over the course of the last few years, it has been that with you cannot have one without the other two. You cannot have two without one. You cannot. It all has to be there in order for you to truly be able to live in this life. Yes, so beautifully said. We are divinity embodied. We are all of our pieces. We are not just a physical body. We are not just our mind. We are not just our emotions. We are not just spirit embodied. We have to find that marriage point between all of them. And one of the pieces I love so much about the work that I do and about my journey has been coming to this place collectively. This is happening all around the world for us where we're coming to this remembrance that we, our bodies, our wisdom, our spirit, we have access to all of the wisdom that we need. Everything we need is within us. It's just coming back to that. We are all sovereign beings. We are all, I feel like we're coming away from that structure of this outside authority having a say to us. We're coming to that place of remembering that we have this inner authority and that we do not need to wait idly by. We do not need to have to be dragged along per se, but that we can come back to this place, that we can come back to not just our own sovereignty, but sitting in that place of seeing that divine being in each and every person around us, coming back to seeing each person around us as that sovereign being and being able to meet people in that heart space. And then when I sit with that, my heart is so full for the potential we have in this world. If we could come back to seeing each and every person as their heart, as that sovereign divine being and relate from that place. Oh, how different the world would be if we were capable and able. We are. We're capable and able. We just haven't learned how to do that yet. One thing that I started thinking about as you were saying that is that we tend to have that call back to our bodies what we want to do in the world, all of these kinds of things as we start our perimenopausal journey. That is actually a very natural, energetic transition because you're no longer focused on home and hearth and raising your kids. You're starting to think about like you're turning outward, right? What is life going to look like after my children are grown? You start asking questions around what feels aligned to you. I've had so many women come into my practice right in that age zone that are starting to ask questions like, why am I the only one that can do this? Everybody else in my house has capable hands too. I'm not the only person that can do this and I want to do something else for me. 
Sometimes it's a career change. Sometimes it's a relationship change where you've decided Mm. to get out of a relationship that hasn't been serving you for a long period of time. And now you feel like you have the strength and the bandwidth, because frankly, raising children takes off a lot of bandwidth to make steps in a more aligned direction. But let's not wait until we get there. Yes, that is a natural, energetic transition that happens in a woman's life. People start asking some of these questions when the invitation for how you're going to spend your chi gets extended to you at 35. Closer to 42, if you haven't been listening to the invitation at 35, by the time you hit 40, 42, that invitation is no longer an invitation. It's a sit down, girlfriend. We must change. (laughs) And all of the symptoms that show up in perimenopause are a big part of have we accepted that invitation that our body extended to us or have we tried in order to stay with a structure that isn't working for us, tried to maintain the same cadence that we had before, ignoring what our body has been telling us, and then it starts to become incredibly symptomatic. But I did want to highlight because you know, there has been a lot of interest on this program about the perimenopausal journey and things that signal the perimenopausal journey. What do I do with this journey? I feel like a crazy person. And I think that it's a really beautiful piece to also add it in a thread to add into this conversation because we naturally start asking some of these questions as our energy shifts when we start coming into the very early stages of our perimenopausal journey. We do naturally start asking some of these questions. We start seeking out places and spaces where we can be held in some of this. It feels incredibly uncomfortable and sometimes very confrontational for people who are brand new to this idea of doing things for themselves and pouring back into their own cup. And it can almost feel sinful to some people to not continue to be the martyr where you're sacrificing yourself on the altar of your household and saying, okay, just take more from me, right? Because that's a very real experience for people. Again, a lot of shame and guilt that goes into that. But your body, your energetic changes that naturally start happening at the beginning stages of this perimenopausal journey essentially don't give you a freaking choice. They go, no, you must change now. Otherwise, you end up with things like breast cancer. Like, that's a very real example of how energy that's not addressed and not well supported because of an overtaxation and in a lot of cases, suppression can mastitize. That's just one example. Fibroids are an example. Like I could go on and on. Like the body says you've bottled this stuff for too long. You haven't had a container with which to address it, release it, deal with it, have a community of people to share it with and hold you in that vulnerable space so that you can feel truly seen and heard. That's something that is so damn important to me in my practice and why my appointments are as long as they are, because I don't want you to feel like a number. I want you to feel seen and heard and have a conversation with me as a practitioner. I mean, I get very candid with people, but it's because that is me developing intimacy. Because we don't have enough spaces for that. It directly correlates and impacts your journey. If you truly are invested in creating holistic solutions for yourself, There's so much buzzword. I did an episode in season two about holistic wellness, not being an Amazon Prime kind of fix. And I did one about holistic herbalism and its difference with allopathic herbalism, right? Where you have a symptom and you're giving an herb for that specific symptom instead of going, well, what's the root cause? What is the reason that this is all happening? And one of the big reasons for health issues in women is this suppression of voice, this overtaxation of energy, and not being able to be held in a sacred container to truly feel seen, held, heard, and safe. Mm. Be who they are. Oh, 
Yes. Oh, that was so beautifully put together. This is one of the reasons I love the work that you do so much is to have that marriage point between this very divine feminine structure of operating, right, of holding and supporting one another to wellness. But the fact that you are bringing in the physical, you're bringing in, but the fact that I have someone and all of your wonderful patients have someone to come to sit with and to bring their very real world physical issues of this is what's going on with the cycle. This is what's going on. I don't really know. The doctor says I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. And to have someone there who can just hold them in that, who can include and let them talk about the emotional pieces of life that are affecting them to, to see that every single area is connected and not to be like, well, I don't care about any of those areas. Like, let's just talk about this one like hyper fixated thing and then figure out how to fix that. When we are multifaceted beings, we are these beautiful creatures that have so much going on that every single component affects all the others. And we need that space to be held in that, to feel safe enough that we might mention that thing that, you know, our mind is like, oh, I don't know if that's important to say or not. And that is that missing piece that links to what that root really is. That root might be so far from what we think it is, but to have that space, that loving, tender space to be able to go on that journey down into our beings to find where that root anchors in. I am so very grateful that you are one of my practitioners and that yeah. I have you in my corner and that the world has you via this podcast, via the work that you do. I just so very grateful for your place in our world. Thank you. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally dabbing my eyes as she's saying this Aww. because everything that I do is from my heart space and I want to fill that space where people don't feel seen and don't feel heard. And that translates to that nasty little feeling of I am not enough. Mm. And there's such a deep connection between feeling seen and heard and feeling like you're worthy of pouring back into your cup, feeling seen and heard. I've got goosebumps as I'm saying, <laughs> because I feel this so deeply in my body. And everything that I do in my practice comes from that heart space. And, you know, when I sit across, I truly believe this is why I had all of the miscarriages that I did that led me on this journey, because I can now hold the hand of the woman sitting across the table from me who has just lost their baby, and they don't feel like they're on a fucking island alone anymore. Mm. Because that is the most isolating experience in the entire world. Even when you have the most compassionate, it plugged in partner, when you are physically going through that experience and it is testing your very feminine energy and the thing that you feel like as a woman is supposed to be the most basic thing that your body can do and you can't do it for whatever the reason, you feel like a failure. You feel like you're alone. You feel like there's nowhere to turn. We don't talk about that topic nearly enough and so that people don't feel alone. So I truly believe that I had to go through all of that heartache in order to be able to truly see people where they're at when they're in that moment of complete anguish and isolation. And talking about the spiritual journey being a baptism by fire, like, I feel so grateful that I have been led. Spirit has guided me in the direction that I have gone in because it's helped me to help so many people. That is why I am here. That is why I do this. That's why this show exists because you deserve to understand how your body works. The system has kept this information from you for too long. Not just how do I keep myself from having period cramps. You're probably having the cramps not only because of something you're doing physically, but because of something you're denying inside of yourself. And Katie is one of my practitioners as well. <laughs> because I needed to be able to do this in order to show up in my practice the way I needed to. And 
like I said before, it is not a graceful transition, man. Like you have to really take a look at some of those deep parts of yourself that you don't dare voice Mm -hmm. because they trigger feelings of shame or guilt or around ideas of self-worth or whatever it is. But when you take a deep look at that and you go, well, where the hell is this coming from? Because I am a whole person. And I'm here for a reason. All of that shifts because then you realize that a lot of this garbage that you tell yourself is because of the construct, not because of you and who you are. And Katie's work helps you to unlock that and get in touch with that and find and reclaim and remember that part of yourself, which like she said, is in there. It's Mm -hmm. just sometimes needs a guide and the roadmap for the journey of how to actually get there. Oh, this where I love talking about this so much. I feel like it's gonna make me cry now. I just want to echo a couple words you just said. We are whole people. We are here for a reason. And we are worthy and important. Let that sink in for a second. I'm going to let those statements that she just said sink in for a second. Because we have this inner critic who is very loud and oftentimes tells us exactly the opposite. Mm. We are whole. We are deserving of love. You are enough. And I actually feel like that is probably the best way that we could possibly end this episode. You are enough. And your health depends on your embodied belief of exactly that. So if you are feeling called to reach out to Katie Ama Rose for some of this guide work to be able to bring you home to who you really are. How can people find you? Mm. They can find me at my website, spiritremembered.com, Instagram, spiritremembered, and on Facebook, I have a page, The Temple of Remembrance, and that will be full of just some free content, tidbits, meditations, things to just help along this journey, help along our lives. Thank you so much for having me. It was so wonderful to be here. Oh, thank you so much for joining me. And if you can't tell by the cadence with which Katie speaks, just listening to this episode, her meditations are juicy and amazing. And I highly recommend you checking out the Temple of Remembrance on Facebook. But all of her contact information is going to be in the show notes. Be sure if you are feeling called to reach out to Katie, she does amazing work. I can absolutely attest to that and witness that. And thank you again so much for coming on the show today. This is medicine that so many women need. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Reproductive Rebel. Reproductive Rebel is recorded by certified peristeam hydrotherapist and acutonics practitioner, herbalist, and Chinese nutritional therapist, Adrian Irizarry of Moon Essence LLC. If you are interested in setting up an appointment for one-on-one support, ordering from our store, or checking out our course offerings, visit our website at moonessence.life. Be sure to subscribe to our newsletter and get insider information on upcoming events and offerings. Join the conversation, like and follow us at moonessenceme on Instagram, Facebook, or LinkedIn. Your voices make this program possible. Thank you all for your continued support.